As we move ahead in the AI project cycle, we come across the second stage that is data acquisition. This stage is about acquiring data for the project. Let us first understand what is data. Data is a piece of information or facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. So they are nothing but raw facts and they need to be processed to get meaningful information. Any AI project has to be trained first by feeding data. Now there are two different types of data. We call that as training data and testing data. Training data is the one on which we train and fit our AI model basically to fit the parameters. Testing data is the one which is used to check the performance of the model. So the output of training data is available for us to model. But when we are testing it, the data is not seen. So it is unseen data for which the predictions have to be made. For example, if we want to make an AI model which will predict the salary of the employee based on previous salaries, we would feed the data of the previous salaries into the machine. This is the training data. Once it is ready, it will predict the next salary efficiently. Now, when we are testing it, we feed a different data set and that is the testing Data. We need to remember that the training data needs to be relevant and authentic to the problem scope. If we feed in data which is biased, that is the one that shows partiality or not relevant, then our predictions may go wrong and ultimately our AI model may fail. We have come to the stage of data acquisition. Now we need to know what data to get based on the problem statement. We need to visualize the factors which affect the problem statement. For this, we need to extract the data features that affect the problem scope. Now, let us try to find out the parameters which affect the problem statement directly or indirectly and list them. So, data features refer to the type of data that we want to collect. But identifying whether it is reliable or authentic is a very, very important task. In the case of our kimchi example, the parameters which had to be considered are the amount of rainfall in a particular year that will affect the growth of the crop, the cost of chili pepper, the cost of sea salt and the cost of fermented seafood. And finally, the cost of Napa cabbage, which is the most important ingredient in kimchi. Let us now try to understand how to acquire data from reliable sources. Data is the base for any AI project that we build. Now, when we are acquiring it, we need to check whether it is from a reliable and authentic source. Also, the acquisition methods shall be authentic so that our project does not create any sort of conflicts with anyone. There are various sources from where we can collect the data. We can conduct online surveys, telephonic surveys, face-to-face -face surveys and collect responses. This can serve as a data source. We can also import data or information from a website and save it locally on the computer. This is called web scrapping or data scrapping. Data can also be collected using sensors and stored in some sort of data storage solution. Data can be seen, written down, or recorded on the computer and we can make observations based on this data and analyze it for use. 
finally we can make use of api which we call as application programming interface to collect data of a given social media service for analysis so we can collect it from various sources but we need to ensure that this data is authentic reliable and correct sometimes we use the internet and try to acquire data for the project from some random websites such data may not be authentic or we cannot prove this to be authentic extracting private data can be an offense so we need to keep in mind that the data which we collect is open sourced and not anyone's property one of the most reliable and authentic sources of information are the open sourced websites hosted by the government some of the open sourced government portals are data.gov.in and india.gov.in now that we have listed the data features let us look at the concept of system maps system maps help us to find relation between different elements of the problem which we have scoped it helps us in strategizing the solution for achieving the goal of our project so system maps help us to understand complex issues with multiple factors that affect each other it comprises of two things the elements which are the discrete different elements within the system and the interconnections are the relationships that connect the elements now the rules for the system maps are we represent the elements in the form of circles and the relationship or the interconnections in the form of arrows now the arrows can have two signs plus or minus these are the signs are indicators of the nature of relationship the arrow head depicts the direction of the effect and the sign shows their relationship if the arrow goes from one element x to another element y with a plus sign that means they are directly related on the other hand if the arrow goes from one element to another element with a minus sign it means that they are inversely related to each other so an increase in one element may decrease the other element or vice versa now let's understand the basics of mapping i am taking the example of the performance of a student the performance can be affected by different data features such as the built in ability of the student the influence of electronic gadgets teachers talent and resources and the family stress in the system map we use positive and negative signs plus sign means direct relation minus sign means indirect relation so in the example that we had taken positive influence or the direct relation is the built in ability of the student and the teacher's talent and resources so the better the ability of the student the better the performance the lower the ability the lower the performance same way if the teacher is good enough and talented then the performance of the student will increase if the content is not delivered properly then the performance may decrease now indirect relation would be the influence of electronic gadgets and the family issues so this is how we represent the positive and negative signs let us use an animated tool for drawing and understanding system map the link for this is ncase.me/loopy i am opening the website ncase.me/loopy let us try to draw the system map for student performance from scratch i am scrolling down and clicking on make a model from scratch this is the interface that we will be getting on the left side we have four tools pencil text move and eraser 
Now in the middle of the screen we have some information. Let us erase this with the help of eraser. Let me take the pencil and try to draw a circle. When I draw the circle on the right side I get name color. I am typing the name as student performance and I am going to choose blue color filling amount of color is, can be increased or decreased. Now I am going to draw one more element and I am going to name this as influence of electronic gadgets. Let me give an orange color for this. Now I am going to draw the third element or the data feature and name this as say family issues or family stress. Now I am drawing the fourth element and I am going to name this as students inbuilt ability. Now I am drawing the final element and I am going to name this as teacher's talent. Now let me change the color or first let me draw the interconnections. I am drawing a line between all four of them from influence of electronic gadget to student performance, family stress to student performance, students inbuilt ability to student performance and teachers talent to student performance. So there are four features which are linked with student performance. I am selecting one of them. The moment I click on plus sign I can make it more or less because this is an indirect relationship I am choosing less. The same way I am doing it for electronic gadgets. Now I can click on the move tool and move them. I can click on the move tool and change the color. Let me change the color to red for indirect relation and green for direct relation. Now I am going to move these. As you can see I am moving the data features with the help of this move tool. We can click on the play button once it is done. So an increase in teacher's talent will increase the performance of the student and the decrease will decrease. But here when I click on influence of electronic gadget, you will see the arrow changing its direction. Right? So the arrow will change the direction when I am clicking on indirect relation and the arrow will remain the same when I am clicking on a direct relation. We can also have loops in system maps. The system map for kimchi example will have the following parameters, amount of rainfall, cost of chili pepper, cost of sea salt, cost of fermented seafood and cost of napa cabbage. And when we draw this using loopy, we will get the system map like this. Kimchi price is directly related to the prices of napa cabbage, chili pepper, sea salt and seafood. And the rainfall is going to affect the prices of napa cabbage and chili pepper but in an indirect way. So I am using minus sign for that and for all the other data features I am using the plus sign. So in this session we learned what is data, what is the difference between testing data and training data, what are data features, how to acquire data from reliable sources, what are system maps and how to use ncase.me slash loopy. I hope you have understood these Please do like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.